Hey everyone, hope you're doing well. This video is going to be a recap of the Photoshop demo we did today. Now hopefully this activity helps acclimate you to Photoshop's interface and its myriad of tools as it can get, um, it can get quite confusing for people who have never used this program before. So here we go. First things first, you're going to go to create a new. You can either click it here from the opening screen or you can go to file new. Either way, it takes you to a new document window, right, where you can create uh, what we would say is our canvas, essentially, right, the size of our artboard, um, and maybe some of the little details that go into it. Let's name this one uh, PS Demo 1. And for our dimensions, let's make sure we're in inches. Let's do a 2.5 width by a 3.5 inches height. Okay, and colors as follow, we can do 16-bit, a white background will be fine, and yeah, if you have these settings, just hit create, and boom, there we go. Now, the first thing you'll notice we're missing, probably the most important panel that we need to have is our layers panel, as we discussed in class. If you're missing that or any of your other panels or tools or whatever, go to window and then locate it and then just select it. So for me, it's gonna be layers, right? So again, if any of your windows or panels are missing, it's probably here. And yeah, so I'm just gonna hit layers. There we go. The layers panel popped up and we're good to go. So before I do anything, I wanna make sure I have my workspace all set up and that entails my rulers, right? They're already out. You can see them here under the options bar and to the right of the tool panel right so make sure you have them out if you don't we hit command R to toggle them on and off and once you do we're gonna do something we're gonna do an extra step to help um, help us precisely uh, make our playing card right so I'm gonna click within the ruler right and then just drag out now find the halfway point of three and a half inches which is there we go 1.75 and then we're going to do the same for the width right so 1.25 so right here there we go cool so now we've uh, successfully divided our playing card into four equal quadrants this is really going to help us um, align our elements but we can do a little bit extra take another one out and Put it to 3.405. Okay, then let's take another one out and put it at 0 0.095. Okay, there we go. And then let's draw two more. We'll do this one at 0 0.08. and then 2.42 okay so these are really going to help us out when we're laying uh, our elements onto our uh, artboard here so let's actually bring in another uh, image file so I'm going to go to file open and then I'm going to locate the heart file the heart photo that I included in your demo uh, downloads right so I'm going to open that up and you're gonna actually get a little window like this that asks it to rasterize, right? You're gonna say okay, and boom. So now if we check our tab bar right here, right? We have two. One is our actual PSD file, which is our artboard. The other one is our photo. And so to move this element, to move this heart, we're gonna make sure we have our move tool selected right so it's the very top item of our toolbar or v for shortcut or if you just simply cannot find it like any other tool we can actually just go click this icon here the search icon and then type in or the tool we're looking for in this case move tool and it'll not only tell you the shortcut but you could actually just click on it and it'll give you the tool so we're good to go now with the move tool we can click and drag any element we want as long it is as it is selected right and we can even also click drag 
hover above the PSD tab and then hover over the artboard and when we drop it, we're gonna prompt, be prompted uh, with the yes or no question, just say yes, because it has a different depth. And then boom, now it might seem like uh, something's wrong, don't worry. It just actually means this item's way too big for our art, but we can shrink it down to size. So make sure this item is selected. How do we know that? Well, make sure the layer is selected, right? So actually I'm gonna change layer one to part, right? And then we're gonna hit okay. And then now, now that I know it's selected, I'm gonna hit Command T to enable free transform. And you'll notice, whoa, yeah, geez, this thing is huge, right? But once we hit Command T, the little handlebars appear on its border and we're able to click and drag and resize it. So it's actually really big. Um, here we go, good, 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 good. Okay. We're gonna shrink it down. Uh, now this part's up to you, but you can shrink it down to however you know close you can get to this. So once we want to confirm our free transformation, we can either hit enter or hit the check mark up here. But just know that you're not allowed or you're not going to be able to uh, proceed to your next action without confirming um, your transformation first. So hit check or hit enter, and there we go. We got our heart ready to go. A little quick tip: if you want to um, zoom in zoom out right you can either hit command plus or command minus or if you're using a mouse if you hold option hold option down and then use the wheel to kind of just zoom in and out now we're going to duplicate our heart okay we can do that several ways one i can right click my heart layer and then hit duplicate and then heart copy i'm just going to name it heart copy or heart two maybe heart two i'll just name it that we have two hearts, they're actually stacked on each other, so if you move one, you're actually taking it off, right? Um, I'm gonna hit Command Z to bring it back. If you hold Shift while you drag it, it'll lock into place with it, right? So, let's see, how far do I want it to be? So I actually drew two more guidelines to maybe help me uh, right, find the middle point of each quadrant. Um, this one here at 0.625 and then this one here at 1.875 okay so that will help me line up my hearts there we go so I'm going to duplicate another heart but this time actually I'm just gonna hold option click and then drag out okay So I'm going to select all these layers, all the hearts. I can do this either by, with the move tool, drawing a lasso box around it, right? See how all the layers got highlighted? Or just simply, you know, holding shift and or command and highlighting all my layers. Now, because of that, I'm going to hold option and I'm going to clone all of them, right? Good. And then now with all these still selected, right, I'm gonna select all these now, and then I'm gonna hit Command T to free transform. Now, Command T enabling free transform does not um, solely mean you wanna adjust the size of things, right? I can actually rotate things too. So if I go here, you'll notice the handlebar becomes, um, right, kind of like a half wheel, right, turning, right? I can rotate them. We want to get a nice 180 degrees, right? Because we're flipping them all around here. Confirm my transformation, right? By entering or hitting the check mark. And maybe moving these a little bit closer as well. I think that confirms, right? They're both uh, around the same height now. Okay, good. So I have my hearts all set up. I'm zoom out to get a look. Now, I have a lot of hearts, right? I have a lot of hearts, but like I said, I'm gonna merge them into one. So when ready, when you're ready to merge them all, um, you wanna highlight them all. But before I do that, I wanna save one more heart. So I'm gonna option drag this, oops. So I'm gonna option drag this one heart 
and this is the one I'm going to turn the visibility off for the time being because I'm not going to use it and then I'm going to select all these I'm going to right click and I'm going to say merge layers now we have one one uh, one layer of hearts I'm going to actually retitle these main parts okay Good. And now, actually, if I wanted to, I can Command T and then just resize them all individually. Maybe I'll shrink them down a little bit because maybe they're too big for my liking, my taste, right? So I'm going to accept that change and then oops, maybe recenter it right around here. Okay, cool. So we're actually going to select our type tool now. Again, if you don't remember where it is, just go to the search glass and select type and then there you go but actually if you needed to look at it it's right here on the, the toolbar it's the big T right so before I actually type anything check out this these are our color swatches the top one indicates what color your next uh, action will be whether that means your paintbrush your paint bucket pencil or in this case our type tool so whatever we're going to type will actually end up being black um, but let's actually change it to red and let's try to match these reds right so obviously to change it we can double click on the tile or the swatch and then select the color but I want it to match right I want it to match these hearts so instead I'm going to use my eyedropper here select the color from the heart and boom now our tile or swatch is indicating that whatever we do next it's going to be the exact same color as the heart so I'm going to get my type tool back out click on the card or the artboard and it's going to create a text box for us i think 30 may be too big let's do 24 and then i'm going to type in a 10 oops let's uh let's delete this lorem ipsum i'm going to type in 10 there we go and so i have my 10 up here in the corner yeah i put it around there somewhere now let's bring back the heart right the invisible one right so right here if i turn on the visibility it pops up and I can drag them down. Oops. And then maybe he's too big also. So let's shrink this heart down. So how do we do that? Free transform, command T, drag him down. Maybe that size. There we go. I think that's fine. And hit confirm. Good. There we go. Notice how all the hearts already come with a stroke, a black stroke outline. Let's add that to our 10, number 10, right? So I'm gonna double click its layer, right? Not on the number or on the T, but like in the kind of the empty meat of it, right? So like right here. And a layer style will pop up with a bunch of effects that you can apply. We're just gonna be simple, right? Obviously there's a lot of things you can do, but we're just gonna add a simple stroke. And now you'll notice that our 10 has a nice solid black stroke outline to help it, uh, you know, distinguish itself. Now I wanna do is make a, make a folder for our, um, our 10, or well, our corner elements, really. So let's highlight these two. And then once with our two layers selected, if we go down here to the little folder icon, create a new group, hit that, and boom. They're both now, if you open the tree, right, they're both in there. So I'm gonna rename my group bottom, uh, bottom corner. There we go. Let's duplicate it. Right click. And then you want to find duplicate uh, group right here. And then we're going to type in top corner. And then hit OK. And then with our bottom corner selected, one drag, oops, no, you want them both though. Sorry about that. There we go. OK. So I actually made a mistake. Top corner is, uh, is actually going to be at the bottom. So we actually really need to rename this. but. Uh, that's fine. So bottom. So that way, if I turn off the visibility here, the bop, bottom heart and 10 disappears. Turn off the visibility here, the top one does the same. So now let's rotate, right? Let's flip this thing 180, the bottom one, I mean. And what you're going to do is make sure all the elements are selected. Instead of me actually you know, free transforming and then rotating it 180 painfully, right? It might be hard to line up. We can actually, if you have your layer selected, go to edit and then transform, rotate 180. 
There we go. Nice and easy, right? Now this looks like a very clean uh, playing card. Nothing wrong with that. We can also play with a few more options. Notice there's something called clip priority, right? So for example, if I were to bring in our panther image, right? So if I were to go open and then, did I say panther? Sorry, y'all, I meant cougar. I know our mascot. So if I bring in our cougar mascot, I wanted to bring him into our uh, our playing card profile. Say so yes. Okay, right. And if I were to free transform him down to scale, if I put him at the top, if I put this cougar at the top of our layer panel, it stacks on top of everything. It gets what we call clip priority or layer priority, which basically means whatever is at the top of our layer stack gets priority of being seen. So if I moved it down one, right, then the hearts appear over it. If I move down another one, not into the folder, mind you, but maybe at the very bottom, right on top of background, then everything kind of stacks on top of them. If I were to click on my main hearts and then maybe change my blend mode, you see our, our normal, right? It will change the way you see it in comparison to how you stacked it on top of, uh, you know, whatever layer is at the bottom. This one's kind of neat. If you change the blend mode to dissolve, and then lower the opacity to like, well, you can do it to whatever you want, but but um, I don't know, like 75 kind of gives this kind of rough look. I like that. Um, maybe not with the, the cougar in the background though, but you could if you'd like. Um, I don't do the same for these. So right here, I can actually just select the whole folder and say dissolve, and then same thing, right? 75. Okay, so hopefully that wasn't too difficult. Now again, we're just learning the basics so that next week when we get into more difficult things, uh, you won't feel quite as lost around, um, well, just around Photoshop. There's a lot of buttons. So hopefully this really helps get us started on, our right, um, on the right note. Now, if you were able to complete that activity, try doing this one with whatever I gave you in your demo folder, try to create uh, this Ace of Spades Cougar card. And if you're able to do this, then try creating your own playing card. I'm interested in seeing what you, uh, what you make. All right, y'all, keep working. If you have any questions, uh, please let me know. If not, I will see you next week, okay? Have a great weekend.